Russia claims capture of Ukraine's Soldar, Kiev says fighting goes on. Russia said on Friday that its forces had taken control of the town of Soldar in eastern Ukraine, in what would be a rare success for Moscow after months of battlefield reverses, but Kiev said its troops were still fighting in the town. Reuters could not immediately verify the situation in Soldar, a small salt mining town that has been the focus of relentless Russian assault for days. Kiev and the West have played down the town's significance, saying Moscow sacrificed wave upon wave of soldiers and mercenaries in a pointless fight for a bombed-out wasteland, unlikely to affect the wider war except insofar as the huge losses have sapped manpower on both sides. But the capture of the town has taken on an outsized importance as it would, if confirmed, give Moscow a trophy for one of the bloodiest campaigns of the war following major battlefield setbacks throughout the second half of 2022. The capture of Soldar was made possible by the constant bombardment of the enemy by assault and army aviation, missile forces, and artillery of a grouping of Russian forces, Moscow's defense ministry said. Seizing the town would make it possible to cut off Ukrainian supply routes to the larger nearby city of Bakhmut and trap remaining Ukrainian forces there, it said. Moscow has been trying to seize Bakhmut for months. But Sergei Cheravadii, spokesperson for Ukraine's Eastern Military Command, told Reuters by telephone Soldar had not been captured, our units are there, the town is not under Russian control. CNN said on its website that a reporting team just outside the town could hear mortar and rocket fire on Friday afternoon and saw Ukrainian forces ferrying troops in what appeared to be an organized pullback. Meat Grinder A Ukrainian officer in the area, speaking on condition of anonymity as he was not authorized to speak to the media, also told Reuters by telephone the Russians had not fully taken the town. Last night artillery fire was like from hell, both sides. From what I know, our boys have managed to exit some parts of Soldar in an orderly manner and now, assault, groups are counterattacking, but we still hold the town. Ukrainian officials said on Thursday more than 500 civilians, including 15 children, were trapped inside Soldar. In an overnight video address, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky thanked two units in Soldar he said were holding their positions and inflicting significant losses on the enemy. He did not give more details. After Ukrainian forces drove Russia into humiliating retreats for much of the second half of 2022, the front lines have barely budged for the past two months. Meanwhile, the battles around Bakhmut and Soldar became what both sides called a meat grinder, a brutal war of attrition, claiming the lives of thousands of soldiers. Kiev's Western allies see it as a fight for marginal gains on a stretch of front where neither side can make a big breakthrough, a sideshow from battles further north and south, where Ukraine hopes to push through Russian lines. Even if both Bakhmut and Soldar fall to the Russians, it's not going to have a strategic impact on the war itself, U.S. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby told reporters at the White House, and it certainly isn't going to stop the Ukrainians or slow them down. Within Russia, victory in Soldar could boost ultranationalist mercenary leader Yevgeny Prigozhin, whose Wagner group of fighters for hire, including convicts recruited from prison with promises of pardons, has focused on the fight in that area. He is griped as the regular military has taken credit for the Soldar battle without mentioning his fighters. They constantly try to steal victory from the Wagner PMC, private military company, and talk about the presence of other unknown people just to belittle Wagner's merits, he complained. New Weapons The new year has brought important pledges of extra Western weapons for Ukraine, which is seeking armor to mount mechanized battles against Russian tanks. Major new announcements of weapons are likely next week, when U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin hosts defense chiefs from other allies at a U.S. airbase in Germany for a meeting of the contact group set up to provide support for Ukraine. Last week, France, Germany, and the United States pledged to send armored fighting vehicles. Discussion this week has focused on supplying main battle tanks, a major potential upgrade for Kiev.
On Friday, Finland joined Poland in promising to send German-made Leopard tanks to Ukraine as part of a Western coalition apparently being put together to supply them. That requires the permission of Berlin, which has so far been hesitant but has lately signaled a willingness to allow it. A German government spokesman said on Friday Berlin still had yet to receive any formal request for permission to re-export the tanks. Russian President Vladimir Putin launched the invasion on February 24, saying Kiev's ties with the West threatened Russia's security, and Russia has since claimed to have annexed four Ukrainian provinces. Ukraine and its allies call it an unprovoked war to seize territory, and Kiev says it will fight until it recaptures all its land. Reporting by Reuters Bureaus, writing by Peter Graff and Alex Richardson, editing by Philippa Fletcher.